Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'm the host of Law Across the Sea. And uh, usually my program talks about attorneys that are working in the law. Uh, but today we kind of have a specialist, a uh, fellow who was a lawyer. Restaurant business. Uh, and Daya is vice president, operating oper officer of Nell Hawaii. Uh, uh, and he's here today. Welcome, Brian. Very good to see you. Yeah, how are you doing, Mark? Uh, good, good, yeah, good. Great to see you. Thanks, thanks for coming in. I, right off the bat, okay? Sure. All right. Nell, Hawaiian barbecue. Yep. Okay, Hawaiian franchise. Uh -huh. I mean, I've heard several names. What is L and L? What does L and L mean? You'll never guess it. L and L mark means um, Lee and Lee. It stands for Lee and Lee. It's um, you know the Lee family, um, originally uh, immigrants from Korea. They opened L and L business around the Lee Lee era, believe in the fifties or sixties, and very. Little, very few people know this, but they started as a dairy, and they deliver, you know, milk. And back then, um, and I probably should have brought some, but they used to use these old-fashioned glass milk containers, reusable uh, glass milk containers, you know, mm -hmm. that they used to do, and they used cool. to deliver that. And they started out with that business. They eventually uh, opened a uh, drive-in. A restaurant, a small little restaurant, which still stands today on Lilita Street. Um, and somehow in 1976, when Eddie Flores, the founder of um, you know L and L franchise, um, stumbled across it, he said, "Hey, that little restaurant would be great for my mom to run." And his mom is from uh, Hong Kong, China. His dad is uh, from the Philippines. Um, but he said that would be a little great restaurant for my mom uh, to run. So he bought it for his mom as a okay. gift. Okay, that's very nice. And what, uh, you know, we're around uh, around cr Christmas time now. Yeah. What, yeah. What, was it a Christmas present to his mom, or was it just? Uh, I think it might have been a, a birthday present, mm -hmm. sort. I mean, there's always an occasion, but you know, <laughs> um, you know, that's kind of things, right? When you have, you know. That was very nice. You know, gotten back. L, L and L, of uh, course, here, and I want to ask you a little bit more about where it has been it's going. But I'll ask a little bit about you. Oh, okay. okay. Where, where, yeah, sure. where you come from, and how you know what is your? Okay, so um, I was born on the Big Island um, in Honoka. Um, I was um, my parents were in the Philippines. They're both. And uh, they met in the Philippines. My dad was working in the sugar plantations uh, in the Hamoko, on the Hamoko coast uh, for many years. He actually was one of the uh, first uh, to arrive in Hawaii to work on the plantation in 1946. Wow. So he was a Sakala. So he, he was an old gentleman. And when he was able to save up enough uh, money mm. to go back to the Philippines, he met my mom. And um, the rest is history. And so I was born and raised in, uh, on the Big Island. Um, first in uh, Ookala, a little town called Ookala. 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 Uh, right, uh, right outside Honoka'a, about a 10 minute drive outside of Honoka'a towards Hilo. And eventually my family moved to Hilo. So I graduated from Waikia High School uh, in Hilo. And I went to law school and, you know, Okay, yeah, uh, and and I know I, I've taken some of your real estate classes. So right. I know that you talk right. about your parents. Yeah. You talk about your mom a lot. You right. Know? And and I one thing I've learned from doing this show, it, it's it's funny. All the people that I've interviewed, they're they're movers and groovers. And they're you know they got a lot of th parents, big influences on them. Absolutely. And, and what, what about yours? What, I mean, I, what did they teach you? And, you, you know, your mom, you talk about your mom a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, my mom's uh, got a pretty colorful personality. Let, let's say that. So it makes for great stories. And, um, you know, I used to just 
I, I when I first started teaching, I used my mom as an example. Um, you know, as a landlord, where she kind of acts as a landlord, um, and it made for some really great stories. All true, all true. Um, and I noticed people respond to that. I noticed people when I was starting to teach. I didn't know what I was doing, right? You know, I, I came across and taught the classes like a lawyer, like how a lawyer would, and kind of taught you the elements and taught examples. But I found that the best examples are real life examples. And maybe it's something subliminal that I don't even realize that when I talk about my real life, um, real life examples, that something comes out and people kind of connect to that. Right. So for some reason, people connect to that. So I, I've kept using those examples. It's kind of a teaching uh, strategy. As a teaching for, strategy. Yeah. And it never, it never fails. I, th I think it's something that people can relate to. Cause Grabs their attention. Yeah. Everybody has a, a certain relationship with their parents. Parents, yeah. And um, it's taught me a lot myself in, in my relationship with my kids. Um, so... You know, you carry oh, yeah. that your whole life. You know, I, I, that's what I've discovered, is, is the parents' influence. You, 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 think, you think you're done, no. but no. Parents are an incredible um, influence on their children. And whether they realize it or not, or whether they think that they're, whether it's conscious or not, whether they're consciously trying to um, teach something to their children or not, kids uh, pick up on that. They, they are very keen and, and pick up on that. And they don't know it themselves. And certainly when I was growing up, you didn't I, realize. Didn't, I didn't realize it. Yeah. You know, and, and there's always that, those stages in life where you, where you go through where, you know, no, I don't want to be anything like my parents. <laughs> you know, no, I don't want to make the same mistakes. No, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. But, um, you know, then you kind of come back full and say, hey. You learn from yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely learn from that. Now, you, you know, you grew up Big Island boy. Yep. Uh, from proud. a little country town, but then you went to the big, the big city of Hilo. Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> how did you ever become a lawyer? I mean, how did that ever, ever happen? I mean, you're, you know, great story. It, it, your family, your, your parents from the Philippines, you know, immigrants, grew up in the United States, in Hawaii, great place to grow up. But how did you become a lawyer? How did that ever get into your, your mind, your, you know, for, for, for you to be a, go into that profession? Yeah, so the story I like to tell, which is true, <laughs> and it is true, and I think people who grow up uh, in those similar circumstances can relate to this. But when I was growing up, um, with my background and, and both of my parents, um, well, my, my dad was a plantation worker in the sugar plantations. My mom um, was also blueberry, blue collar, the macadamia nut uh, orchards, and then later on in the factories and, and whatnot. But um, choices when you grow up, when I was growing up, were doctor, lawyer, engineer, or that's what people tell you to do. Right? Choose one of those professions. You can't go wrong. Look at so and so. Look at look at this guy. Look at that guy. They know what they're doing. You know. And so that kind of started early on. Um, and then that was something in your mind, something implanted from yeah. I from wanted discussion. absolutely, absolutely. That's something that I huh. um, you know, had in my mind. I mean, and then um, when I was younger, growing up, you know, every family, every everyone faces different problems. And I noticed that if you're a professional, especially if you're, for example, a lawyer, you solve a lot of different problems. Or you'd have the wherewithal, the power, the, the skills, the tools to be able to address certain problems. Whereas if you don't, then you kind of resort to other methods of problem solving, which, mm. which have their place, I, mean, I, I suppose. You resort to fighting, you yelling, screaming, um, you know, that, that type of behavior and I kind of wanted um, you know to have uh, those problem-solving skills and also what um, made me go into law specifically as opposed to the other professions was um, in school um, I noticed I was you know I was not I was not that interested in math and I wasn't that good at science sound like me right yeah right, right. <laughs> and so you know, by default, here I was, here I was, you know, doing law. And, um, you know, it just kind of just so, stuck. So, so something uh, you noticed as growing up and you saw, well, lawyers 
of a way to make things happen and solve problems. And maybe that's what I'd like to do. And uh, your, your parents m must have been pretty happy, pretty proud of you as you, as you progress, because, uh, I mean, you, you, you went on to, to become a professional, yeah. right? right? And, and wh wh where did you go to school? So I went to, um, after I graduated from YK High, I went to Portland State University uh, in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big uh, move for me, you know, and having almost never been away from the islands. But I've always been intrigued at, you know, with the world, the bigger world out there and what it's like and, and to see different places and, and even the whole aspect of travel. I mean, I've always been, ex you know, extremely... Um, you know, interested in that, although I never had really the opportunity as a kid to, to travel, unlike, you know, my kids, for example. Um, and so he, here I was, I said, hey, I'm going to make this move. And I didn't have a lot of choices, frankly, um, go to college. I'm not, I wasn't the perfect kid <laughs> by far. Hard to believe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need a double life. <laughs> um, and so I didn't have a lot of choices, but that was one of the choices. Okay. Along with um, Manoa, uh, UH Manoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I decided, hey, I wanted, you know, something different. I wanted to kind of get out of my comfort zone. I didn't uh, want to have a lot of friends and people that I know around me. And, you know, I just kind of wanted a fresh, new, clean start and see what, what the world has done. Well, you know, and in a, in a funny way, your parents did the same thing, you know? They, yeah. they left yeah. the comfort of home. Of course. And of course. into the unknown. And yeah. you did, too. Yeah. And and you went on to become a lawyer. And what kind of law did you do? What what was? You, and, oh, by the way, what kind of food did you eat at in law school? Was, was there any L and L franchise or anything around? Or? You know, that that's where I really um in college um is and being away from home. That's where I really started to appreciate Hawaii, and uh, of course the food definitely, but every aspect about Hawaii, uh, everything that went on here, um, just everything, the culture. The, even though I'm not Hawaiian, you know, I don't have Hawaiian blood. I mean, even the, the culture, the, the customs, the way uh, different groups interact with each other, the, the melting pot of different ethnic groups, you know, coming together. Um, that just really intrigued me and it really made me appreciate a lot more. And um, definitely in college, whenever there was a Hawaiian place, or even an Asian kind of place. Right. It just reminded me of home, and it's like, yeah, let's go there. And um, I'd, you know, have other people from Hawaii, and sometimes I'd have other people not from Hawaii and try to introduce them to uh, different cuisines. But, you know, that's when I really found that, hey, I, I really love this stuff. I, I have a passion. For Hawaii and For Hawaii, Hawaii general, things. And Hawaii things in general. Yeah. Now, okay, Hawaii. so you, you, you went to law school, you passed the bar. What did you do? What did you do as a lawyer? Okay, so I first started, and my first big break, right, as it said, you know, I, you know uh, my parents, again, no, no connections. Um, you know, we knew maybe one or two lawyers only because we had to avail their services. You know, my, my, my mom and dad got divorced, and the legal system then, and, and some other things uh, going on. But... Um, so it's not like we had a network right. of sorts. So my first big break really was when I was in the second year of law school. And at that time, I had some choices. Um, unlike earlier in my undergrad um, career or undergrad education, I had choices at that time. I did very well in law school. I went to DePaul University uh, in Chicago. Oh, okay, nice. Um, and I actually um, was able to get a... Uh, job, a summer associate position in one of the big firms in Chicago. Good experience. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, great yeah. experience. It was a dream come true. I never thought, you know, I'd yeah. be working on the 80th floor of the Sears Tower. You know, I'd see the Sears Tower in pictures and I'd read about it. And A long way know, from Honoka'a, brother. A long way from Honoka'a. And so I had a choice whether to uh, stay or, or not. And I got uh, offered a clerkship. Um, by Justice Mario Ramil, who was on the Hawaii Supreme Court at that time. Ah. Uh, so I decided, hey, I'm, go I'm going to go back home. I mean, I always felt that, homesick. That's when you graduated from law school? Uh, that's when I graduated. Okay. Um, there was, it was, a. Uh, he said, you know, I've got, I've got the position filled until 98, so you're graduating in 97, so you're going to have to find something to do for a year. Okay. Well, wait, so, a minute. wait a minute. We're going to take a break. 
Okay. For a little bit. All right. For a minute. Okay. And then we're going to come back, and I want you to tell me what you did after you, you got that clerkship. Okay. Or, okay? All right. All right. Thank okay. you. Well, how much time do we have? Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu, and I co-host Hawaii Farmers Series with Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. We talk about Hawaii's local farmers and their supporters. In order to have a vibrant and sustainable local food system, uh, farmers are always the foundation, but there's so many other people uh, involved in the community that help support those farmers. So we bring those folks onto our show every Thursday at 4 p.m. We get their backstory, their history, find out a little more about them, and we find out why they love what they do and their perspective and their advice on how we can continue to have a dynamic and vibrant and sustainable local food system. So we, again, we broadcast live every Thursday at 4 p.m. And you can also catch us on ThinkTech's YouTube channel as well as Alelo54. So we hope you tune in and join us. Thank you. We are back with Brian and Daya and talking about his background, and we're going to get into L&L pretty soon. But you got a clerkship with the Supreme Court. Yep. I got a clerkship with the Supreme Court. Opened up a lot of doors. Yeah. I remember in law school, I covered the town with my resumes. Yeah. Not one single interview. Not one single interview. Yeah. Um, with a clerkship, I had choices. Um, I actually ended up looking this building huh? um, at a firm called Dwyer Imanaka on the 18th. Okay. I still remember it vividly. And um, probably for about um, a, a year, and then the firm split up. So um, Mitch Imanaka, um, yeah, Ben Udo, yeah. um, West Fujimoto, I went with those guys. Um, yeah. Nice group firms. of guys. Yeah, Imanaka, Fujimoto at that time. Um, so and about six more years there. Love. I was doing labor and employment law, labor uh, and re employment. representing management. So it was kind of ironic that <laughs> my both um, of <laughs> members, um, and here I was, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Now, how did you get into L and L? How did I mean? You are uh, again, boy from the Big Island, and you know you're 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 moving ahead. You're you're you have all these opportunities, and then L and L. How did that happen? Okay, so yeah, first year, I still remember it, first year in pr private practice at Dwyer Monaco, there was a party. It was politically related. Um, and then I went because of the food and the politics <laughs> and, and uh, socialize, you know. And, you know, I was told to, hey, you need to get to know. So I went and I, I happened to be at the party. Eddie happened to be there. Um, Eddie. Eddie Flores yeah. happened to be there. The owner uh, of the LNL franchise. The owner at the time, of, yeah. of, of, of LNL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's yeah, yeah, back then. Yeah. But um, a friend of mine introduced us. Oh. And he asked, hey, what do you do? And I said, I'm a lawyer. Wrong. Um, oh, I do labor. I have a problem. This, this, this. There's a labor. For time. Um, issue. And he's not shy, by the way. Oh, he's <laughs> not shy at all. He's not shy at all. And, and, you know, I think that it's a trustee that, you know, I got to pay this much and this, all that. You know, I disagree with them. And, Can you help me? Or take a look at it. And, and I kind of know what he's thinking, probably. You know, and it's first year in practice. Wow. So he's probably thinking, oh, okay, yeah, they probably do it for cheap. What, what was going through his head, but um, yeah, so I took on the, the problem. I did my best that uh, I could, um, and eventually told him. Actually, very, very early on, I said, "Hey, Eddie, you're wrong." Mm -hmm. said, what do you mean I'm wrong? You're wrong. You got This is what you got to do. That's what the law says. <laughs> Are you sure? You've been practicing now. You know, I've been practicing for a year. You know, I want a second. Oh, hey, you know, by all means, because I don't want us. I don't want to you know, make a mistake here, right. you know? But this is what I'm seeing, and this is, this is my call, and I'm calling it, you know? And um, so after a little hemming and hawing, actually a lot of hemming and hawing, he finally uh, agreed, and um, you know, we got past that, um, settled, you know, settled, and um, moved on. 
and not much long after that, um, he gave me more work to do, uh, legal work to do. And then he eventually asked me, hey, do you want to teach? Do you like teaching? I'm like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't mind, you know, talking in front of, um, you know, an audience, you know. And he said, okay, you're, well, you're I'm a, a performer. Uh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a ham is what it is. <laughs> you should see me with the microphone. I'm, I'm a total ham. Um, so he said, hey, why don't you come and teach? I've got a real estate school. I go, I don't know anything about real estate. I, I only do labor and employment law. Right. I told you. <laughs> and he's like, no, but, you know, they need to know law and, you know, they need to know about harassment and discrimination. I go, okay, yeah, that I know. So I'll, I'll do that. So I started doing that. Okay, then you got to know him, I assume, and then after, after a while years. he says, hey, brother. He says, hey, brother, um, are you happy practicing law? I'm like, yeah, why? I'm one of the best in town at what I do, you know. I, I built this career, and I have a long way more to go. I, you know, and uh, my peers, I, I think I'm kind of ahead of the game here. You know, I make a decent living, you know. I mean, more than I've ever, you know, with my background, I mean, that's more than I ever saw before. And um, and so I, I, I truly was uh, quite um, fulfilled. And he said, hey, but, you know, the thing is, don't you have to record your time? I go, yeah, because that's the way we do it. You know, you record right. your time and you yeah. multiply it by your billable rate and that's how, you know, yeah. it goes. And he goes, what if I told you you can do something where it's not based on time? And I was at that point... Um, I, I had my first daughter, my first kid, and I said, you know, it would be really nice to have more time with the family. Yeah. It would be really more, it really would be nice to be able to travel the world a little bit more. Yeah. It would be nice to do all these things. Well, like, lawyers you know? don't always have that, those opportunities. Right, yeah. right, 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 because everything's based on time. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of at a point and we're kind of realizing that, hey, it's not just about the money and the compensation. But there's also a balance, you know. Yeah, another part of life. life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. work-life balance. Okay, what, what, do, what do you do? What, what is the vice president and uh, chief operating officer uh, of L&L, &L, uh, Hawaiian barbecue franchise, what do you do? Okay, yeah, so, and that was my question to Eddie. Like, <laughs> you want me to do what? I don't know, do, I've never heard of that. Oh, I don't know, I can't even flip a burger, you know. <laughs> But anyway, so what, what, what the um, job entails is really to run the day -to all the day-to-day -day aspects of the franchise. And um, it's important to um, separate out the franchise part of the business with the actual restaurant operation. So the restaurant operation is left to the franchisees. Okay. Um, okay. And we um, concentrate on the concept, the model, and developing the image. The, maybe. The image and the system. Brand, the brand. The brand. Yeah. The brand, concept, image, but also developing operating systems. Creating a system where people can follow and hopefully become successful. Really that's what that's what we have to offer. Okay. So you're you're a law you, you know, you're you're a lawyer from Hawaii. Right. Okay. And you're now going into business. Yep. And, you know, something that intrigued me that I didn't know is L&L has uh, some other stores in other countries. I, 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 know, oh, yeah. I know from talking to lots of my friends yeah. uh, that L&L has places in other states. Yeah. How did you, what, how, how did you get other countries? And, and wh are you looking for more or wh what are your plans? Yeah, so up until now, you know, we've never advertised, hey, you want to buy a franchise. We've never, ever done that. Everything has just been, you know, word of mouth. And when you're successful at something, people want to copy you. Mm -hmm. People want a yeah. part of it. And that's yeah. how you know you're, you're doing well, when mm -hmm. people want to copy or people want a part of it. And so, really, people just call up and say, hey, you know, um, I was eating at your restaurant in, um, in uh, the Bay Area when I was there for vacation. Uh, can I open one up in the Philippines? Or can I open, or hey, um, and this is, this is a true story, our Japan franchisee. Hey, I went to Chaminade. I'm a da Japanese national, but I was a foreign exchange student. I went to Chaminade, and just um, down this, the road is an L&L, and I love the food so much, and now I'm in a position to actually um, open up a bunch of stores, and that's Japan. And so really, it's about people just having some sort of experience 
with our brand, with our food. Where, with, where, with where else do you have stores outside of the United States? So we have um, our um, franchisees. Is the franchisees. Yeah. Uh, we have um, we have them in Japan, um, the Philippines, um, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Um, we used to have um, in New Zealand. Um, and we used to have them in American Samoa. We also have them in Guam, but primarily those um, Asian countries is uh, where we we have them. Um, honestly, to be very very frank with you, um, it's difficult. The foreign countries yep. are very very difficult. We used to have um, three in China, mm -hmm. um, but it's a very very difficult business. It's 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 not easy. Um, it's for for a different number of factors. Do you, do you have to hire uh, attorneys in those countries to help you, or or how have you done that in in the past? We sometimes hire um, local counsel in those countries to make sure that we're properly trademarked. Mm -hmm. Although the trademarks now, um, they've got um, you know once you register in your country, if they go if they subscribe to the treaty or I, I don't know the ex exact um, right, right, to it, right, we, right. we do have a franchise lawyer that takes care of it for us. Okay. Um, then that kind of takes care of it, it of itself. But sometimes you still need local counsel right. to make sure that in that country that you've got the rights uh, to you know the trademarks, the trade dress. Everything that goes wrong. And, 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 you know, in your position growing up and being a lawyer, becoming a lawyer, how has that helped you in, in, in your pr present job? How, how has that, has it helped you? Has it, Absolutely. 110%. Um, you know, my skills that I got, you know, in law school and then in practice uh, absolutely helps me every single day. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, with, with law, it's really not so much. A particular skill that you get it's really a way of thinking it's yeah, a way yeah. of thinking solving it's, problems is solving what you problems. mentioned earlier yeah that's what and you saw as growing up yeah yeah looking at things very analytically and then thinking out of the box and saying hey what else what if this what about this what about that and i think that level of skill and also as an attorney really um especially in litigation um it's it's really about it's really about a performance, right? It's, it's about selling yourself or okay. selling the idea, Okay. selling your argument. Speaking about performance, I read somewhere that you knew a Hawaiian chant. Is that right? Is that true? Um, uh, that, that, that's kind of true. It used to be a lot more true than it is today. Well, can, uh, give me a let me, give me, uh, I, uh, you know, can you, can you remember any of it? Uh, I, I can maybe remember a few lines. I competed actually in um, the 1990... Um, 1998, uh, Mary Monarch. Okay. I'd like you to chant us off, because we're at the end of our program. Can you give me a few, a few lines from the chant? I, I, I'd have to take a few minutes and I'd have to, like, okay. you know, that's uh, something that right. was, <laughs> I usually don't get stumped by, <laughs> by questions. All right. So I want to thank you very much yeah. for coming on today. And I appreciate it. And I, I want to hear about, you know, in the future, about L&L &L and where, where it goes no, yeah, and, and yeah, what, it, what happens with, 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 with it in the future. Yeah, that, that was really quick. Yeah, yeah definitely would love to, love to talk more about it. All right. Yeah, Thank you very much, Brian. Okay. Aloha. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.